Hello and welcome to the MAC weather page for this Monday, September 28th. You can see temperatures very balmy out there this morning in the mid to upper 60s. Uh, these are midsummer time readings here, so very, very warm start to the day. I think we'll have uh, temperatures today well into the 70s with a touch of humidity. It's going to make it feel like another summer day. And we're also going to have some scattered showers possibly around. I think the best chance of showers will come tonight into tomorrow morning. I think for the uh, most part, we're going to see uh, around a quarter of an inch to maybe a third of an inch to the north and uh, a trace to as much as uh, 15 hundredths, maybe two tenths across the southern part of the state. Again, I think the best chances will be farther north you go in the state. If we look at the uh, next map, hopefully, my mouse will work here on the MAC Lightning Detection Network. You can see not a lot going out there, about one to three flashes per minute, most of that up to the west of Lake Superior with that activity off to our west. If we take a look at the Great Lakes as a whole, you can see our winds are dominantly out of the south, and again, that's going to bring the warm and increasingly moist air into the area out ahead of a cold front. That's not a very strong front, but it will be enough to drop us down to near normal here for the remainder of the week starting Tuesday. Again, I think on Tuesday, highs will be in the 60s across the area, but that cold front will uh, probably not make it into the southeast part of the state until uh, early to mid-afternoon. So there could be some 70s across our far southern areas like uh, Blissfield and Jasper and over into Ontario. If we take a look at where we've been over the last seven days, you can see quite warm. We're about 4.5 degrees above normal for the month of September across uh, the uh, mid-Michigan area. Temperatures uh, uh, over the last 10 days have been a good 10 degrees above normal from uh, parts of Minnesota back into the Dakotas. If we look at the uh, forecast map for later today, you can see an area of low pressure that's going to dissipate, but that's going to create a little bit of enhanced rainfall out in portions of Nebraska into northwest Iowa into southwest uh, Minnesota. For the rest of the area, it'll be a fairly uniform uh, amount of precipitation over the next couple of days as that front marches to the south and east. And you can see by tomorrow that cold front will be uh, cutting through southeast lower Michigan around the noon hour. And again, warmer temperatures may hang on across southeast part of the state. Now as that front comes into this warm tropical juicy air where they've already had a lot of rainfall across the Gulf and up and down the eastern seaboard, as this cold front uh, comes to into the area and meets up with that juicy air, up and down the spine where there's a lot of lift in the mountains, expect a lot of rainfall from parts of Tennessee all the way into Maine where they could, had, uh, could have some flood issues there. But for us in the Great Lakes, we'll return to sunshine for the rest of the week, beginning possibly as early as late Tuesday, but especially for Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, lots of sunshine, temperatures in the 60s. It'll feel like uh, fall time harvest weather out there. And if we look at the precipitation over the next seven days, you can see for the Great Lakes, much of uh, MAC, uh, not a whole lot of precipitation. Actually, some of the soys and dry beans could use a little moisture as they are getting quite dry as we've gone about seven days without any measurable rainfall. And you can see, of course, the heaviest rains up into the uh, portions of the mid-Atlantic, up along the Appalachians into the northeast, and along the Gulf where a new uh, tropical lake system would be heading towards Florida, and that's going to bring a lot of rainfall to those folks down there. As far as the Palmer Drought Index, this is about nine days old, so a couple areas we'll want to watch. The new one would have come out on Saturday. Apparently, they must not update on the weekends. But look for the uh, areas across the southeast uh, air states that have uh, a lot of this orange and yellow to be a little bit less in that way with the rain they've got. And then across east central lower Michigan, look for these uh, greens to turn a little bit, uh, at least a full shade lighter. we got three shades of green. I think some of these lighter areas will turn to normal and then maybe a shade lighter across these two uh, areas here. But again, we've uh, been dry for about seven days, so we should see drier conditions here and we should be uh, seeing more moisture with the latest Paul, uh, Palmer Drought Index map when it updates later on. As far as the extended outlook over the next 6 to 10 days, a couple of things to take note of, especially the area across Alaska where they've been cold and snowy here uh, for the last several weeks. They uh, show the next 6 to 10 and 8 to 14 days to be warm to much above normal, indicating a ridge off to the south and southeast. And that in turn will build a downstream uh, trough that's going to develop, especially as we get towards mid-month. The first six to ten days of the month don't look all that bad. We'll be around to maybe slightly below normal and a little bit wider than normal. But again, as that trough establishes itself by mid-month and it looks like it'll hang around, we expect a good 10, 15 days of very cool to cold air across much of the eastern and the central part of the United States coming up as we turn the page to October. Again, the first ten days don't look all bad. But uh, we're going to progressively turn colder as the month moves on. 
Um, actually, that was the 8 to 14. This is the 6 to 10. And you can see what are the normal here in those two periods starting to take over across much of the uh, northern and eastern part of the United States. Thanks for stopping by and have a great day, a great work week, and 73s to all.